Can I make the call, please? But muscle menos y years of the Hey. Notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville. Pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene a regular meeting on Tuesday, January the 5th, 2010, at 6 p.m. at the Commission Chambers on the second floor of the Brownsville City Hall Federal Building, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, I'll have everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your love. Help us to each get better at distributing that love to others. Help each of us to never rejoice when something bad happens to someone else, but to encourage them and to give them your love, Lord. Lord, I ask that you be in charge in this meeting and that the best for the city of Brownsville happen here tonight. Help each of us to, again, show your love to each other to respect each other even when we disagree, to realize that our, our colleague may have something worthwhile to share and to hear and listen intently. Lord, we thank you for all these things. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Commissioner's report. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a happy new year to everybody. Welcome back. And at this time, we'll begin with our commissioner's reports. Uh, and we'll begin with Commissioner Charlie Atkins. How y'all doing? Happy New Year. Talk a little bit about the sports park. Uh, just to let you know out there, the, some of the, the leagues have ended, football and, and soccer, but we're making a quick turnaround. And uh, anybody who wants information about the sports park can go to the website. And at the website, it can tell you what exactly you can do out there if you're a team or you're an individual. So I recommend everybody goes out there. I know there's a lot of New Year's resolutions to... to shed the pounds so this is a good opportunity for people to go out there i'm one of them to go out there and take advantage of a of a, of a great park thank you commissioner go uh, i'd like to give a happy new year to everyone i'd like to give you a brief update on imagine brownsville a united brownsville uh, opportunity um, to make it clear that uh, work is still being done very actively on uh, four, 15 different committees of different topics that are important to Brownsville uh, in our current uh, time and future. Um, the coordinating board will uh, definitely be a board that makes recommendations and suggestions that are non-binding. Uh, there will be 14 members that vote on this board from the seven different entities that have overwhelmingly elected to participate with uh, Imagine Brownsville and seven non-voting directors as well from the community. The uh, subcommittees are being formed, people are being asked to participate, and everyone has been um, responding in a very enthusiastic way. The form that the um, Imagine Brownsville will uh, take is still being determined as to whether it be a 501c3 category uh, uh, organization. Bylaws are being drawn up, and it is clear and unanimous that directors' meetings, um, although uh, do not necessarily have to be open to the public, will be open to the public. Uh, lastly, there will be a kickoff of event on January the 21st in the morning that the press will be invited to for all seven entities to uh, sign and pledge on, and this event will be televised as well. Uh, more to come as progress ensues. All right, and on my general update, I'd like to, just to inform the community, especially within the District 1 area and Southmost, that Public Works and uh, through uh, Carlos Lazar Engineering, we do have several projects coming up, and I am going to be calling uh, in early March for a community meeting at the community center so that people can come by and get informed about the different uh, projects that are going to be going out throughout the year within the southmost area. So that's uh, part of my general update, and at this time we're going to continue on there for proclamations. Mm -hmm. So City Secretary, could you call, call them out? Hudson Elementary, second grade chesting. Mm 
Yep. Anybody here from the chess team? Come on up. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tampa, just to let you know, I put this on the agenda on behalf of all of us because we want to recognize these kids for an outstanding job they did. And, uh, and we'll, we'll look. Proclamation speaks for itself. So. Are you going to read it from the people? Yeah, I can read it real quick. All right, guys, this is a proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, recognizing and congratulating the Hudson Elementary School second grade chess team on its second place finish in the National K-12 through Championships in Dallas, Texas. Whereas Brownsville, Texas has long enjoyed the reputation of being one of the, one of the leading chess centers in Texas, and whereas on December 11th, 12th, and 13th, 2009 in Dallas, Texas, the Hudson Elementary School second grade chess team continued that record of excellence by winning second place in the national K-12 championships. And whereas first place was literally a fraction away with the team losing by a half a point to a team from New York. And whereas team members include Mateo Salas, Troy Trevino, Ramses Linan, Jorge A. Mares, and Norberto Manzanar, Manza, Manzares, playing under the, the tutelage of coaches Luis Gomez and Sergio Novello with the guidance of school principal Dr. Rita B. Hernandez. And whereas everyone involved in this excellent performance is eagerly awaiting a rematch with the New Yorkers <laughs> in the spring nationals in 2010. And whereas we extend to the players, coaches, and administrators at Hudson Elementary School, our congratulations on a great performance and a job well done. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of authority vested by the charter of said city, do hereby recognize and congratulate the Hudson Elementary School second grade chess team on its second place finish in the national K-12 championships in Dallas, Texas, and further wish the team even greater success in the future. Done on this fifth day of January 2010, signed by Pat Omala and the rest of the City Commission. Commissioners, Mr. Cavaller, thank you, Mr. Young, for your help with this. As you know, Brownsville is blessed with wonderful talent, so thank you for choosing our students to recognize tonight. They are amazing. I wish I could say I taught them how to play. I am simply their travel agent. I book their travel, and that is it. All glory goes to them, their wonderful parents, all the individuals with the cameras out there, and of course, their coaches. So, you know, Commissioner Atkinson, I had forgotten about that half point. I, I was, uh, 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 it's another week of lost sleep, but yeah. we'll be ready. We'll be ready for nationals, right, guys? Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. That's the next one. The details we have here. Jimmy Gonzalez, Grupo Mas. Thank you. 
I got it. It's being up. It's being uh, It's getting last touch up. <laughs> Here we go. I want to thank real quick uh, uh, Jimmy Gonzalez and Grupo Maz for the excellent job they've done. And this was brought about by George Gavito. He, uh, he gave me a call and wanted to uh, see if the city could recognize you for a job well done. And let me read this to you. It's a proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, recognizing and congratulating Jimmy Gonzalez and El Grupo Maz on their continuing contributions to Tejano music. Whereas Brownsville native Jimmy Gonzalez has dedicated the past 31 years to the music business and to entertaining his public and is recognized as one of the most popular, successful, and influential Tejano artists in the world, winning over the past three decades 15 gold records, 10 platinum records, and has re re recently been awarded with his seventh Tejano Music Award Grammy. And whereas Jimmy Gonzalez began his music career playing in smoke-filled clubs and has, through the dedication and hard work, risen to the top, beginning in 2001 with the Hano Album of the Year, Song of the Year, Male Entertainer of the Year, and Male Vocalist of the Year, along with the 2001 Tejano Music Industry Life Achievement Award and Best Tejano Mus Musician Guitar Awards. And whereas Jimmy Gonzalez in 2001 also won the first of three conservative Grammy Awards for Best Tejano Album, Que Iba a Pensar, followed in 2002 by Sempre Humilidad, and in 2003, by Si Me Faltas Tu. And whereas the 2003 Latin Grammy was accompanied by the 2003 Tejano Music Award for Song of the Year, Yo Te Voy a Amar, crossing over Song of the Year, Ahora Que Hago Sin Ti, and was nominated for Univision's prestigious Pre Premio Lo Nuestro Award. And whereas, then on November 5th, 2009, Jimmy Gonzalez continued his winning tradition with the pre presentation of his seventh Latin Grammy Award for Best Tejano Album. The legend continues and thus remains as perhaps the premier Tejano artist in the world and is certainly a credit to his hometown and is loved by the people he strives to entertain his audience. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of authority vested by a charter of said city and on behalf of all our citizens, do hereby recognize and congratulate Jimmy Gonzalez and El Grupo Maz on their unmatched success in the world of Tejano music and further wish them unending success in the future. Done on this day of January, uh, fifth day of January 2010, signed by uh, Mayor Padomada and the rest of the city commission. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you so much, man. It's a, it's a pleasure, man. And uh, first of all, I, I've been blessed by God so many times, and uh, I come a long way since Tyler Street in frente de la buena vida. <laughs> and uh, man, it's it's unbelievable. And uh, when uh, our breakup back in 1988 with Joe Lopez, uh, we had, the old Moss was never never won a Latin Grammy, and. Uh, I just didn't know what to do when the breakup. I was always behind the scene. And uh, my wife said, just what you do for Joe Lopez, do it for yourself. And uh, I did, and a lot of trips to church and stuff. And uh, seven Grammys later, I'm here with you guys today. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Mr. Amala and Rick. And I don't know a lot of the people here, but thank you so much. And uh, I'm here for Brownsville. Brownsville is mentioned everywhere in the world that I go, and uh, I'm very proud of my, my, my town, and I love Brownsville, and I love you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, 
Gracias, Tito Mata. A proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, recognizing Tito Mata for his powerlifting excellence. Whereas Tito Mata has long been a recognized leading advocate in Brownsville of physical fitness, healthy lifestyles, and bodybuilding, and for years operated a gymnasium that served as a headquarters for local fitness devotees, and whereas Tito Mata continues his dedication to physical fitness and strong physiques by proving his prowess in the world of competitive powerlifting, and whereas on April 25, 2009 in Austin, Texas, Tito Mata won the Open and Masters Bench Press Championship at the American Powerlifting Federation Texas Classic, and in so doing, broke the Texas Bench Press record for the Master 50 to 54 age division and the 220 weight class. And whereas on August, 20, on August 1, 2009, Tito Mata won the Op Open and Masters Bench Press Championship at the United States Powerlifting Federation Texas Roundup, and in so doing, broke the Texas bench press record for the 50 to 59 age division and the 220 weight class. And whereas on August 15, 2009, at Dallas, Texas, Tito Mata won the International Strength Association World Championship for the age of 50 through 59 age division and the 198 weight class, also breaking the record of 360 pounds by lifting 370 pounds. And whereas Tito Mata is an example of what can happen when a competitor dedicates himself to excellence and achievement, and for this he deserves our congratulations. Now therefore, we the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the charter of said city, do hereby recognize and congratulate Tito Mata on, winning his, on his winning performances in the world of competitive powerlifting and further wish him many more successes in the future. Then on this, the, fir the first day of December, 2009, Pat Omada and city, city Commissioners. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone here. Uh, this, this means a lot to me. You know, 40 years ago, I had a dream and I dreamt of being a world champion. And you know what, nobody believed me. And I started off in a garage lifting bricks. And uh, my father, I'll never forget, got some uh, coffee cans, filled them up with cement. And that's how I started. And uh, back in the 70s, I used to tell people, I want to open up a gym. And nobody, nobody thought that a gym would happen in Brownsville. No, nobody, it's, it's not going to happen. It happened, uh, I've retired from the gym business, and uh, I'm now pursuing my second goal. I'm pursuing a PhD. I just graduated, and uh, that is my goal, to, to become a world champion and to attain my PhD. And I want to thank all of you. I'll never forget this. And everywhere I go, I stand proud for Brownsville. You know, people, at, first of all, they ask me, what are you? And I say, I'm a Mexican-American. And I am from Brownsville, and they, they Mexican American? What, what are you doing here? But let me tell you, when I get up and I hold those trophies, they know who I am, 
and they know where Brownsville, Texas is today. Thank you. Commission. So, our first employee for 2010 Employee of the Month, uh, and let me uh, let me uh, congratulate the Employee of the Year for last year was Michael Franklin from the uh, Traffic Department. So we start off with the New Year with uh, our Employee of the Month for January, Karina Suniga. Congratulations. Thank you. Karina works uh, under the City Secretary's Office. Uh, <laughs> And as you can see by her lovely smile, she is recognized as someone that does fantastic with customer service, uh, people that come in there for records, et cetera. A lot of pressure during the time that we were giving out the uh, uh, birth certificates for immigration purposes and things like that, and she handled it very well. Uh, she's multitasked, and she also helps out with statistical information, uh, depending on what division is needing uh, help at the, uh, at the department. She's always there to help out. Uh, she also helps us out with the events we have, for example, child days and et cetera. She's always there for us, uh, whether it's during work time or after time, she's there with us all, at all times. Uh, she's she's uh, obtained uh, state certification in, uh, in areas that, that are really in dire need at the secretary's office, uh, including uh, acknowledgement of paternity processes and things like that. So uh, as employee of the month, uh, she's entitled to our plaque. Employee of the Month Award uh, to Karina Suriga for the month of January. And, uh, <laughs> employee team. And she gets a cap. I don't know if she'll wear it, but she can give it to somebody she likes. <laughs> and of course, she's eligible for the Employee of the Year at, uh, in December when we have our uh, banquet. So congratulations. And Karina has a lot to say. So. I'll pass on the baton. Is she still good? <laughs> Did she still get a day off? She, she, yeah, she'll a get week? a day off. A week? A week, a week <laughs> if you make it for the year. Oh, all right. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank um, the city to giving me the opportunity to work. Because if they didn't, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, thank Estella and the staff for helping me um, learn everything I know. <laughs> And um, thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you. We've done that you already. Okay. Uh, can I, I'll do the mayor's report then real quick. Um, the Weir project, one of the most important projects uh, uh, for Brownsville, uh, it's a 29-year-old project. We had a meeting in El Paso, December 16th. Uh, all the key players were there. IBWC, SILA, uh, Kanawa, the federal agency, like the EPA uh, in, in the United States. And uh, the issues we discussed, risk management, risk issues, uh, uh, cost issues, and political issues, and uh, what it would take to get the project done. And everybody agreed that this was a, a good project and the risks were minimal and decided to uh, uh, exchange letters of support for the project and, uh, and also define clearly the cost uh, aspect of the project um, and the uh, uh, agreement to construct the project 
and they're going to formalize that hopefully within 45 to 90 days at the most. Uh, if everything stays on track, I think that's when the uh, presidential permit will, will start the process for that project. So I think uh, everybody uh, came out out of that meeting uh, very pleased, uh, exceeded our expectations. We didn't expect, uh, because there was a lot of opposition, we expected maybe another meeting or two to resolve them, but we resolved all the issues. Um, the MPO is chairman. Um, we're dealing with many infrastructure uh, issues, dealing with roads and, and, and grants, uh, and uh, there's millions of dollars uh, coming to us through the MPO. Um, PAWS uh, right now is uh, trying to address uh, concerns uh, with the weather uh, to help get the word out in conjunction with the city. Um, uh, people to provide shelter for the for the for the pets, uh, either farm animals or mascots, to make sure they protect them from the elements. Um, insulated cardboard uh, cardboard's an insulator. Uh, we encourage people to to lay out cardboard in, in garages and put the pets in the garage or indoors uh, to help keep the pets keep warm and, and get through this uh, cold snap. Um, Toys for children, uh, we put out a bulletin, a press release, and the only one that took advantage of this opportunity was Ciudad Victoria. Uh, people from Brownsville were, had the same opportunity, uh, and uh, we sent 1,800 uh, toys to Ciudad Victoria for the disadvantaged children over there, and we sent some toys, I think, to Matamoros also. Um, the churches here, uh, for some reason or another, maybe with short notice or some, uh, did not participate. Hopefully one, next year they will. One here and one in One here and one in Okay, we did have then two churches uh, participate then. Um, we're still working. We submitted the mayor's grant for $100,000, which I think uh, we stand a good chance of, of, of obtaining. The health fair uh, will be uh, postponed till March or April uh, due to uh, 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 the hot days and a bunch of other stuff taking place. It was decided to postpone it till till uh, March or April to get more support for it. Hopefully, uh, uh, we'll get the medical community more involved. Um, cruelty to animals has been a big issue. Uh, we're hoping that this uh, ish, uh, this incident of the cruelty of that black puppy uh, uh, sends a strong message that uh, it's not tolerated in Brownsville. And we're hoping that this will be a penalty uh, <coughs> charge indictment, not a misdemeanor. Uh, to have anything less, I think, would be to minimize this kind of behavior, and it's not accepted or toler tolerated in Brownsville. We're asking that it be a felony, not a, not a misdemeanor. Uh, my travel, I was in uh, Ciudad Victoria the 23rd, uh, trying to get more support for the weir. Um, in a, and I just got back from, from Victoria again. So I'm still working <coughs> very actively on this because I think this is a very important project for the city of Brownsville. Uh, it's something that will increase our water reserves from, from uh, 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 25 days to 45 days, no, from 10 days to tw uh, 45 days, and Matamoros water reserves from two days to 25 days. Uh, and also it'll help us maybe uh, bring the wall down as an alternative by offering the Weir project uh, as a uh, security measure <coughs> instead of the wall. Um, right now, with the uh, weather uh, uh, expected to get below freezing temperatures, um, I, at my direction, the uh, day before yesterday, I contacted the uh, city manager, the emergency uh, management coordinator, SICAM2, uh, Art Rodriguez, the health department director, Bill Young, our uh, public, public uh, service uh, uh, coordinator uh, to try to raise awareness for people, especially the young and the elderly, to uh, make sure that they protect themselves, not be out and about, uh, hopefully you know, to minimize any risk to either get sick or, or loss of life. Anybody that does not have shelter, uh, we're going to provide a number on channel 12. Uh, the number is 956-504-7405. Uh, uh, for those that do not have heat, uh, heating, uh, please contact us, and uh, if you need transportation, we'll pick you up and take you to a shelter. We're going to start with the Osamon Center uh, as, as a 
refuge place for, for those who do not, uh, who, need, who need shelter and need a warmth because they don't have either transportation or uh, uh, heat in their house. Uh, if um, we need to open up another one in the southmost area or other place, depending on the amount of calls we get, uh, we will open up another shelter. But I urge uh, citizens uh, to help each other out. If you can, invite a neighbor. If you know if he doesn't have heat, invite him over. Uh, let's make sure we don't lose anybody or anybody gets seriously sick. Minimize the risk to the elderly and the young, and particularly children will be going uh, to school. Uh, make sure they're protected, make sure they're well covered. And we ask that uh, everybody take the necessary precautions to avoid uh, costly damage to their house. Uh, either shut your valves at the, uh, at the meter, uh, where you cut off the water going into the house so your pipes don't freeze. Um, open your faucets so they'll drain, and so water won't be stuck in the pipes. And again, they will freeze and bust. So open up your faucets, drain them. Uh, store up in water, put it in your bathtub, that way you can have for your bathroom, and pots, uh, potable water, uh, just to write out those, uh, what's expected to be a, a very cold snap uh, below the 30s, uh, particularly Friday and Saturday. Um, or leave your faucets running uh, a little bit so the water does not uh, stand still and freeze and, and bust pipes, which can be very costly and do damage to your house. So the Osanam Center um, will be open Others opened uh, if needed. Uh, the number will be on channel 12, and I will repeat the number again, 504-7405 if you need transportation, if you can't get to shelter, and if you, need, uh, if you don't have heat. With that, uh, we will proceed with then the- Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I omitted something on my report. I was wondering if I would be able to just read it out. On uh, January the Thursday, January the 31st, there will be an energy efficiency green conference and expo held at the iTech Center for UTBTSC. And it is an all day, there is a $25 registration fee. And uh, you can look on energy-expo.org for more information as far as what's gonna be going on at the conference. But it is on Thursday, January the 21st. It's a day long conference and I believe lunch is provided with the, with the fee. So that'll be going on once again Thursday, January the 21st, Energy Efficiency Green Conference Expo at the UTB Center, at the ITEC. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I oh, also forgot, um, I went to speak at the Idea Academy and I think I will say here, and I got some very lovely letters from children, uh, Christmas cards, and uh, I mean, it was just uh, thanking me and, and, and really, really uh, appreciative of uh, of uh, what we do. Let me read one to you real quick. It says, Dear Mayor Omada, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to Idea's sixth grade class. We are so grateful to have a government official like you who not only cares about animals, but also cares about inspiring young students to take care of their communities. We hope you enjoyed the experience as much as we did. Sincerely yours, uh, Ms. Uh, Schneider's class and everybody else. And I got <coughs> letters of them and stuff like that. It's, it's great to go out there uh, and meet the kids and, and talk to them about being part of the community and concerns they may have. And uh, Raul Seguirre did the same thing. Um, let's see, uh, got letters of uh, thank you from others, uh, from Ciudad Victoria for the toys on behalf of the city. Uh, tomorrow uh, we'll be going to, and the commissioners are invited, we'll be going to Matamoros. Uh, there's there's going to be a, um, uh, a little reception or ceremony there, thanking the city of Brownsville uh, for responding in, in their need when uh, uh, there was a fire last year in Matamoros and, and uh, Lenny Perez, Chief, Chief Perez, uh, and the firemen responded and helped out a lot and prevented, contained the fire and helped uh, uh, make sure that the loss was minimal as much as could be. So they have we received the invitation today uh, Chief Lenny Perez is going there tomorrow with me, and of course, the commissioners are invited to go there also to accept the recognition on behalf of the city. Uh, with that, we'll move on to um, item um, five, the consent agenda items. Consent agenda items numbers A through uh, C. A through okay. E, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, this is the consent uh, agenda items. Can I have a motion? To approve. We have a second, Commissioner Atkinson uh, seconds it, Commissioner Triani makes a motion. Uh, any discussion? 
All in favor? Hold on, I got, I got something. Okay, you have a discussion? There's one agenda item, I guess that should have been on there, and it, it wasn't posted for a second reading. As far as the, car, the loans, that loan uh, pay, for, for the for the, the payday employees? loans, it was it's not on the on the the payday loans on the agenda. The payday loans. The payday loans. It's not on the agenda, so I think that has to come back up next. Right. We didn't get any information on that. That's why it's not on there. But as soon as we get something, it will be back on the agenda. Okay. That's why I want to make sure. But right now, we have no issue with these right here. No, no. Approve, okay. We have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Uh, item six. Item six, consideration and action to appoint or reappoint three alternates to the Board of Adjustments. Do we have any appointments? Good evening, Mayor. Members of the City Commission, yes, we do have two applicants uh, that came to apply, uh, Mr. Mike Garza and Joyce Brown. I'm going to appoint Mike Garza. Second. We have a motion by uh, Commissioner Atkins, second by Gentlemen. Commissioner Annie uh, uh, for Mike Garza. Any discussion? All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Carries unanimously. You have another appointment? You have one? Okay. Do you have another suggestion? No? Well, oh, can, if you want to nominate. Joyce, Joyce Brown is the second person. Joyce yeah. Brown. Okay, we have. Uh, okay, wait, we have three alternates. Yeah, but we only have two right now. We have two applicants, unless you want to nominate. Joyce Brown is the no uh, nominee. Can I have a second? Second. I have a second by Dr. Gowan. Commissioner Gowan, uh, any discussion? All in favor? All, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we'll save the next one for uh, next. Mayor, Commissioner uh, Atkinson, uh, the payday loan was a resolution that was signed on December the 15th. It was already disposed of? What do you mean? The payday loans that you were inquiring it about? A second reading. It, it does not require a second reading. It does not require a second reading. It's a resolution. I'll come in and the thing it says you. it's a public hearing. It wasn't a public hearing, it was a resolution. Well, in our packet it says it's a public hearing. That's all. I just want to make sure we're not we'll, doing We'll anything. go into that, but it was a resolution that was signed on December the 15th. We'll look at that. Okay, item seven. Item seven, announcement of mayoral appointment to the Brownsville Housing Authority. Okay, I have an announcement on an appointment to the Brownsville Housing Authority, Art Rendon. Okay, yeah. and uh, he'll be joining the uh, board there with Browser Housing Authority. Okay, uh, number eight. Public comment period. Uh, we have, we have how many? We have five. Five, okay. The first one is Craig Timmer, Mr. Timmer. The second, uh, Ms. Putinet, uh, Ms. Timmer again, Rose Timmer. And then uh, Mr. Oresti and Jen, then Jolie Rubio in that order. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. My name is Craig Timmer, and I'm here to thank you again and to thank everyone here for supporting this uh, bag ordinance, plastic bag ordinance that was just recently passed. I think it's going to be wonderful. I, I couldn't help but think when those young people were up here, the, the second graders and, and the chess uh, that they won, the chess project that they won, the, the competition, that when these young people grow up, they're going to see a very different Brownsville from what we see right now. And I think that is just really, really fantastic. And, and I think all of us deserve a big round of applause. Y'all for passing it, the people out here for working on it. And it's, it's just really a great thing. And, and we're going to see a Brownsville that's going to look a lot like it did 20 or 25 years ago instead of a big mess like, like we see right now. So <clears throat> again, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Mr. Timmer. <coughs> Sharon Putnett. My cohort. Greetings. I too want to take the opportunity to thank you for making this, this very, very necessary decision. If ever you are in doubt as to the decision you've made, all you have to do is Google dangers of plastic bags. And it will certainly bring to light uh, really, truly, the dangers of plastic bags. I'm very concerned, as I know the mayor is as well, uh, in terms of wildlife and our, our plants and our animals. And uh, I think this has been a good decision for them because we are the ones that have to speak for them. So 
I just want to take this opportunity. Everybody's heard about as much from Sharon Putnett as they need to on recycling and litter control and whatever. So uh, I do, do want to thank you for making this decision. I appreciate that. Thank you, well, thank you for making it happen too, Ms. Putnett, along with everybody else. Ms. Timmer. I'm excited. This is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a good day for Brownsville. It's a good day for Brownsville, and it's going to continue to be a good day for Brownsville. I met with some of the people that were very interesting, interested and instrumental in bringing this forward over the holidays, and we've got a lot of projects planned. So we'll be back to give you updates. Uh, I've had a new, tremendous amount of phone calls. Um, I don't know if you know, I'm sure you do if you get on the web, that Healthy Communities is partnering with Walt Disney World to, if you give a day to the community, you get a ticket to Walt Disney World Resorts. You have to sign up, you go to their website, and we have had a tremendous response on um, people who want to volunteer with the city. We're going to do uh, Gonzales Park. I got that call right before we came to the commissioner's meeting. We're going to do um, a pilot recycling. We're going to um, clean up the areas. Healthy communities, oh sorry, am I done? Uh, Healthy communities is going to sponsor a lens on litter to again, um, get people to be aware of our little problem. We're going to partner with the school district, the bands of people to go forward and let people know that we are very serious about our little problem. And we hope to be back this time next year with curbside recycling. We're looking at some serious money for that and healthy communities will spearhead that. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much, I appreciate you. Thank you, Ms. Timmer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Oresti. Some positive, I hope. Roberto Resti, 1220, Calle Pluton, Galaxia. I would like to uh, give this uh, commission a picture. The picture is, uh, I'd like to thank the uh, health department, Mr. Rodriguez, he took action in the last meeting I came. The tires on top of this house, and they're gone. And this is an abandoned house on Calle Pluton in the Calle Espacio. Uh, all the tires were on top of this house and they were there for such a long time and finally they're gone. And I'd like to say thank you for him taking quick action on that. Uh, the second thing I'd like to thank is uh, Chief Carlos Garcia for working on the 31st of January, uh, December. He came by when I was working at night at the car wash that I work at night and he came by and he came to make sure that it was all right and I like to say thank you. The chief was working out that whole night I think and I like to say thank you for the chief for being so kind for being there for me. And uh, I'd like to uh, bring a second picture and this is a concern I brought at December and this is uh, Old Port Isabel Road and Boca Chica. And what happened was the public works went out there maybe yesterday and they just put dirt on this humongous hole that's right there. And this, this morning a truck went over it again and started digging into it again. This is a problem that's concerning a lot of people, especially the Kentucky Fried Chicken that's right there at the corner. Uh, it needs to be done a better job. This is getting terrible. It was almost 18 to two feet down and all the pipes that were there are busted. So this is a concern, I keep looking at this because if people are passing Boca Chica and we have tourists coming through there, they need to, we don't want them to see this kind of thing. And this is a heavily, heavily traffic area and it needs to be taken care of once and for all. This is a major problem and it's gonna continue. And the next thing is, uh, I just like to say thank you to all those people that they came by where I work. Uh, saying that I bring many issues that they like to be up here and I like to extend a uh, invitation to all those concerned citizens to come up here that I come up here because sometimes people don't want to come up here they're afraid but they shouldn't be afraid to come up here this is not it is a public speaking it is hard it's not something that you can just come up here and say I practice overnight came up and did a good job it's not it's hard, and I'd like to invite all the people in Brownsville, they have a concern, 
come up here and don't be afraid. Thank you very much, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you, Mr. Oresti. Uh, Jolie Rubio. Can I just say, Mayor, that we're not, we're not finished with that. that we're just starting. Pardon? We're just starting that project, so we're not finished. Okay. Uh, uh, Mayor, Commission, my name is Jolie Rubio. I am the uh, immediate past chairman of the Browns Beautification Committee, and as such, I'm a, an advisory member for life. I didn't know that until later on, but I like to thank, uh, tell you all thanks for the plastic bag ordinance. It has the support of everyone on the beautification committee. Uh, I'm also a board director of the Healthy Communities of Brownsville. And as such, we've partnered together uh, on many occasions to make Brownsville a, a cleaner, nicer place. Uh, a lot of our cleanups uh, involve volunteers from both groups, uh, monies from both groups to, to keep Brownsville uh, looking nice, at, at least on a couple of occasions throughout the year. And this uh, plastic bag ordinance, uh, the voluntary compliance this year, the education efforts that we're going to be um, having this year to educate the public on alternatives to plastic bags, uh, to businesses uh, as to their alternatives also, will go a long way in keeping Brownsville beautiful. Uh, I can't tell you how uh, overjoyed I am to know that we've passed this. Uh, I believe we'll probably be the first community, I believe, in the state of Texas and probably in the southern uh, part of the United States to have this kind of ordinance in place. Uh, I know it's going to take a little bit of work in order to get everybody educated and to um, have an enforcement of an ordinance, but it's not something that can't be overcome in the next couple of years, and hopefully this will serve as a model to other communities in the United States and around the world. I, I know uh, the efforts in Mexico are very uh, far further advanced than we are in the United States because I travel in Mexico. I just got back from the Huasteca region. And everywhere you go, whenever they have a festival and stuff like that, they have recycling efforts on the festivals. They have uh, ecological movements to eliminate trash, reduce their amount of uh, waste in their, uh, in their dumps and stuff like that, the burning of the dumps. So um, they've seemed like they've gone a little bit past us, but hopefully uh, we can uh, recover some ground uh, with this kind of model ordinance and, and show that we, uh, we're also concerned about our environment here. And, in South Texas and the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, item nine, please. Item nine, consideration and action to adopt resolution number 2010-001 to reaccept, review, amend, and readopt all of the provisions listed in the documents titled City of Brownsville, Texas Amended Investment Policy and City of Brownsville, Texas Amended Investment Strategy Statement. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission, every uh, once a year uh, we come to you to uh, show you the uh, investment policy, any changes that we need to make to our investment in, uh, strategy statement. And uh, this is a result of the um, Texas Government Code Chapter 2256 of the Public Funds Investment Act, Subchapter A, Authorized Investments for Governmental Entities, Section 225.003 of Subsection E. Uh, states, uh, the governing body of an investment entity shall review its investment policy and invest investment strategies not less than annually. Uh, the governing body shall adopt a written instrument by rule, order, ordinance, or resolution stating that it has reviewed the investment policy and uh, or investment strategies. Uh, the invest the uh, City Commission adopted the City's investment and in, uh, investment strategy policy on the 24th of September of 1996. Uh, the city's investment and strategy policy has been amended and reviewed uh, 10 times since then. Uh, since uh, First National Bank, since our uh, First National Bank acts as our depository contract, it pays uh, right now 2.6% on, on, on all our certificates of deposits. Uh, we are amending our, poli to, to, our policy to increase the, the diversification of certificates of deposit because of the interest rate that they, that they have right now from 75 to 100 uh, percent. This policy is also updating the current list of, uh, of the investment brokers. Uh, we're also updating the entire city's operating funds, construction and capital improvement funds, and debt service funds where we are investing uh, all the uh, idle funds for the city. 
the investment uh, and strategy policy is a very conservative policy. Uh, the city does not invest its idle cash in risky uh, investments such as derivatives. Our investment policy's primary objectives is for preservation of capital, safety of city funds, maintenance of sufficient, sufficient liquidity, maximization of return within, within acceptable risk constraints, diversification of, in, of investments, and uh, something that's not there is, of course, the yield. Um, uh, in 1996, uh, the state of Texas required cities such as ours to develop and adopt an investment and strategy policy soon after the Orange County, California, uh, soon after they filed for bankruptcy on December 6, 1994. So when this happened, the state of Texas decided to require all municipalities to have an investment policy because it would, they wanted to make sure that what happened in Orange County way back in 94 would not happened to us. And a little bit brief history of Orange County. Orange County became the largest municipality in U.S. history to declare bankruptcy after the county treasurer of the Orange County had lost 1.7 billion of taxpayers' money through investments in risky Walt, Wall Street and securities. For several years before then, uh, the, uh, the county treasurer had done wonders for for Orange County because yeah, obviously at that time the economy was better. Uh, if you recall, 94 brought in one of our recessions and uh, that gentleman, uh, through, through those risky investments, uh, we lost 1.7 billion. And of course, when the state found, about, found this uh, to be very risky, they decided for us to have an investment policy. So tonight, uh, we're recommending asking that the City Commission approve Resolution 2010-1. 001, as is required by our policy. Based on the recommendation by our finance director, can I have a motion? I'd move to approve. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, at this time, do you see any need for any updates or for anything that this commission needs to pay attention to as far as with our current uh, national, with the, way, with the way the nation is right now? Hey, is there anything that we need to protect ourselves from or anything like that? We take a very conservative approach, Commissioner. We want As to make do sure don't, don't, don't go into any risky investments. And we're fortunate right now that the contract that we, we have with First National Bank, our depository, is paying uh, 2.6 on our CEO certificates of deposit, which are high rate compared to the rates that are being offered uh, today. Uh, we, all, we will stick with a very conservative approach. We may not earn as much interest, but at least it's, we know it's very safe. It's, it's steady. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any further <coughs> discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item, please. Item, item 10. 10. Item 10, consideration and action to authorize the Brownsville Police Department to apply for a 2010 Burn Justice Assistance Grant being authorized by the Criminal Justice Division of the governor's office to assist state and local governments in the reduction of crime through border security enhancement. Would approve. Second. Your motion second. <laughs> Any discussion? Great job, Chief. Do you want to say something, Chief? Mayor, uh, uh, members of the City Commission, good evening and happy new year and thank happy you for the support. You're speechless, huh? Speechless. <laughs> I have an easy all job. In, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carried. Good to Next see you. Time. Item 11, consideration and action to authorize and accept an interlocal agreement for the Public Safety Interoperable commu Communications Grant between the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council and the City of Brownsville. Uh, this, this agreement relates to the planning, development, and operation and provisions of the use of the radio inter interoperable communication equipment and the funding that we received back in uh, fiscal year 2007. Some of this equipment has already been, uh, uh, begin to be installed at, at our communication center. And I'd like to thank Mr. Jeff Johnson because he was very, uh, uh, helpful in obtaining this money for us back in physical year 2007. And it's just an interlocal, interlocal agreement as to the provisions of how to use the equipment, how to maintain it, and who has the ownership of the equipment un until such time that the federal government re relinquishes uh, the ownership uh, to us in 2013. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank Item you. 12. Item 12, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase and delivery of one heavy-duty wheelchair lift equipped 
fixed route transit bus for the City of Brownsville Bus Department. Good evening, Mayor, City Commissioners. On July 7, 2009, the City Commission awarded a contract for the purchase and delivery of five low floor heavy duty wheelchair uh, fixed route transit buses uh, for the City of Brownsville Bus Department to Gillick out of California in the amount of $335,679 each for a total of uh, uh, $1,678,395. That's a recap. At this time, we're, uh, we would like to recommend the award of a contract for the purchase and delivery of one additional transit bus, a fixed route bus, for the Brownsville um, Bus Department to be awarded uh, once again to Gillick in the amount of 335,679, that's the same amount. As per the contract, we have the right to, um, to purchase additional buses for up to five years. And this is just another one, an extra one. Delivery of this bus is 545 days after the receipt of the purchase order. But the bus department was able to negotiate the delivery uh, at the same time of the five buses that, that were purchased back in July the 7th. Funding for this procurement is coming out of a, of a federal fund in the amount of 330000 and the remaining uh, balance of 5679 is coming out of general fund or the matching fund. Good approved. We have motion approved by Commissioner Agassiz. Second. 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 Second by Commissioner Longoria. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Thank you. Adjournment? Mayor, adjourn. uh, before we adjourn, just I know you'll probably do it also, but just to remind people to please follow all safety precautions during this upcoming freeze. Let me repeat the number again um, for people uh, to call. It'll be on channel 12. Uh, please uh, take the uh, advisory uh, precautions that the Herald's putting out and and the media and Channel 12 and, and common sense. Uh, we don't want nobody uh, getting sick or losing a life or something like that. So please, if you need transportation, contact us at the number that uh, was, was uh, put out a minute ago and uh, we'll provide you the transportation. You got the number? Yeah. Uh, it is 504-7405. You got it, okay. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, thank you very much. I have a motion to adjourn. Aye. A second? second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion can stay.